Welcome, my friends, to episode 11 of Happy Work TV. I'm Chris Reimer, your intrepid host, and today we are going to talk about commitment number nine in the list of 46 commitments that are part of a work code of conduct that's in my book called Happy Work, and can't cover up the title, and that, that work code of conduct is called the Happy Work Agreement. And so I think you guys are going to find this to be a pretty interesting document. 46 commitments. Employers are making commitments to their employees on how to build a better workforce. But employees are also making commitments back to their employers. We haven't gotten to any of those yet. So the first, whatever, 11 episodes of Happy Work TV, we've been kind of beating up on ownership and management. You know, they deserve it, of course, to some degree, but employees are going to have some, commit some commitments to make as well. Uh, right now, we are just dealing with uh, employers. And so, oh, and this is in a section of the Happy Work Agreement called Respect for the Work Process. Uh, and so, this one's rather interesting. Let me uh, read it to you. So, the last one, Commitment 8, was the one where it said, I will not be afraid to hire employees who are smarter than me. Now we're going in the other direction, and frankly, I've lived through some things that have caused me to insert this into the agreement. Here we go. An employer or manager is saying this, I will not keep dead weight around. I do not want to be mean and cutthroat, but I promise to build a workforce where our employees can excel, even if that means pulling the trigger on some tough decisions. One should not have to pick up the slack for underperforming employees. Now, that's the first part of it. Let's touch upon that real quick. There's a second part that we'll get to. Um, so we've all worked at places where some people work harder than others, but they all seem to be able to keep their jobs. They all get the same raise every year sometimes, which never seems quite fair. You know, that you're the one that picks up the, the slack. You're the one that gets the extra assignments because your boss knows that you're a hard worker and knows that the other person isn't, and yet that boss does nothing about that slacker. They don't get rid of the person. And after a while, you're just sitting there thinking to yourself, what does it take to actually get fired around this place? I've worked at places like that. I don't want to work at places like that. I don't want to ever get fired. That's no fun. I've been laid off twice, fired once, almost fired a second time had a few jobs in my time, but no, so no one wants that to happen. But at the same time, I don't want to work in a place where like employment is just totally guaranteed. Trust me, at that point, you will be surrounded by some lazy, lazy folks. And I've had it happen. Uh, I mean, I, I have, I have worked with people who fall asleep at their desks. I mean, that's just not okay. I've worked with people that would lock themselves in the bathroom and smoke pot for a half hour. Those I, I've worked, at places where they're, they're taking a smoke break, it seems like every half hour, like no matter where I'm going, any time of day, leaving the business to go to lunch, coming back from a meeting, those people would always seem to be outside smoking. And so I put this in here to try to make things a little bit fair for you, the person who is working really hard at their job. It simply is not fair. There is nothing fair about underperforming employees and having managers who will do nothing about it. So managers and owners, we need you to be giving feedback. That was a couple uh, numbers ago in the commitment. We need to know how we're doing. You need to be giving us performance reviews, either official by the year, which would be fantastic, unofficial feedback as we go along throughout the year. Please help us get better. But man, if there is someone who's just a few... <laughs> Stop that. Dog. Stop! If, if there is someone that is just a few sandwiches short of a picnic, help them as much as you can. Put them into performance evaluation reviews or whatever. But, uh, you know, ha try to help them get better. If they simply aren't made for your business, then they may have to go work somewhere else. And that that's not a happy time. It's never happy to have to get rid of people. But... Um, if you put in an honest effort and it's just not working out with them, they're going to have to go. Here's the second part of it. And this is real interesting because I was kind of told by some people maybe not to put this in there. Um, knowing that we sometimes have to pull the trigger on tough decisions, here's this. We are not going to make personnel decisions, however, using Jack Welch style stack rankings. So what's the other word for stack rankings? Um, it's like a force bell curve, basically. So here's what's happening. There are some businesses still today 
where each and every year they fire the bottom 10% of the workforce. Then they reset the clock, and then for the next year, you're fighting to basically to stay out of the bottom 10%. You may be stuck in the middle, and these percentages are all different, 60, 70, 80%. And then there's like a top 10% to it. Of course, you really wanna be there because that's where the top raises go. But I was told by some people not to put this in there because Jack Welch is considered to be a pretty influential CEO type guy, pretty smart dude, made a lot of money uh, for GE and off GE. And you know, I just said, I, I don't really care. I find this to be a very, very lazy way to manage a workforce. I've had some people tell me that the GE he had to do that because when he got there, they were so bloated that there was only one humane way to have managers get rid of people. And it was to kind of like take the decision making out, like don't pick favorites, just find that bottom 10% and continually get rid of them year after year to keep your workforce strong. I don't like this, I think it's silly. And I, if, if I ever meet Jack, I'll tell him, I think this is not a good idea. What makes 10% the right number? Maybe only 5% of your workforce right now is not in good shape. I would suggest maybe then just getting rid of that 5%. What if 20% of your workforce right now is blowing chunks, okay? 10% then is not gonna be quite efficient enough. You aren't getting rid of the bad people fast enough. So taking this 10% route, and there are corporations, I know them, I know some of the corporations that are still doing this. I just don't like this. I find it to be incredibly lazy, not to mention, not to mention, this video is going long, I apologize. I hope you're still watching. Not to mention, when you have these stack rankings, think about like a top 10 percenter and think about someone who's stuck in the middle. So they're getting like the 3% raises, maybe 5% raises, but you wanna make it to the top. So you're working your ass off to get to the top. And then a 10 percenter, and a middle 80 percenter are asked to collaborate on a project. How do you think 10 percent person's gonna feel about that? Middle 80 percent person who wants to go up to the top and climb, they're gonna love working with the 10 percent person. They're gonna learn from that person. That person's not a 10 percenter, hopefully, for no reason. So you're gonna learn from that person. Hopefully some of that's gonna rub off on you. You might even do such a great job that you'll supplant that person. I don't think that person's going to want that to happen. I am not going to be interested in collaborating with you and cooperating with you too much if there is a chance that I will no longer be at the, in the top 10%. So I find these stack rankings to be totally stupid. And I believe Microsoft got rid of them recently. They found out that people wouldn't want to cooperate if they were from different strata of rankings within the company. So it's, to me, it's just plain silly. So um, it's okay to work with underperforming employees and try to improve them. It's okay sometimes to admit that someone is in the wrong seat on the wrong bus, and it's okay sometimes, and never easy. If it is easy, you have no heart, but it's not easy to get rid of good people who aren't doing a great job and simply can't learn. And But for the rest of us who are, are stuck there having to work with these underperforming people, don't mean to sound like a big jerk, it's okay to get rid of them. You have been watching, I believe, episode 11 of Happy Work TV. Thank you so much. I'll see you in episode 12.